Martin Kelly. I'm, Minister, I'm, I'm seeking to, to make an advance in regard to the Island Fisheries Heritage Bill, which you'll recall when we were on the Agriculture Committee in 2017 is something we brought forward. Myself and Deputy Ferris introduced this piece of legislation, and what it's designed to do is to ensure that island fishermen have a chance to be able to make an income. It's for small artisan fishers to be able to use boats of less than 12 metres where the fisher is on the boat, the holder of the licence has to be on the boat while they're fishing. And uh, it's a piece of legislation which has been delayed considerably. And we understand that we're waiting for direction from the Minister to the, to the committee for to get this forward. Very so much. Minister, I'd hope that you would be coming with a positive response to this issue. Yeah, thanks Deputy Kenny. And I hope to be engaging with the committee very shortly now in relation to an update um, in relation to the, to, to the bill. And as you know, and I pointed out, the Island Fisheries Heritage Bill of 2017 um, uh, goes, back to two, or goes back to 2017 and it creates and it seeks to create a specific system for licensing island fishers to conduct small-scale coastal fishing activities um, and would provide regulatory powers for this purpose. It's important to state there has been a number of significant developments since 2017. Um, we have seen through Minister Humphreys um, published this June, for example, our Living Islands or National Islands Policy, which is important. The aim of it is to, to ensure sustainable, vibrant communities in our islands. Um, and a whole of government approach has been taken to developing an extensive consultation process as well with island communities in relation to um, an action plan from 2023 to 26. In the fishery side, Deputy Kenny, I, I established the Seafood Task Force, as you know, to analyse in depth the impact of the uh, Trade and Cooperation Agreement. Um, and uh, a number of uh, proposals came forward from that task force, which published it in, it was published in 2021 recommending 16 separate initiatives and to date have announced 12 of those with a budget of 270 million euro. Um, in addition as well since the inception of the bill have given official recognition to two, two new producer organizations for inshore fishers, uh, the Irish Islands Marine Resource Organization and also the National Inshore Fisheries Association which significantly improves the standing and advocacy of small scale fishers in the sea fisheries and consultative process including in the quota management advisory committee which makes recommendations to me on, on the management of national fisheries quotas. But in relation to the bill specifically, uh, Deputy Kenny, I've been taking significant legal advice and seek, so I've sought significant legal advice in relation to its um, legality and its, the, capacity, its po the possibility of it uh, be, be, being implemented and being taken forward. I've been considering that in detail and I'll be reverting to the committee now very soon um, with an update in that regard. Uh, th thank you, Minister, and, and you know, and I appreciate these things have to be given due consideration. However, the position for island dwellers in particular is that their opportunity for making a livelihood is very limited because they're on an island, they're out on the sea, they don't have the opportunities that people living in any other part of the country have, and it's, it's very clear that you know, what they use and the tradition they've had is using small boats they have an opportunity for to try and make a living from that. And while I, I appreciate you know, the work that Heather Humphreys or other ministers may be doing in respect of trying to make the islands more viable, the fact of the matter is that if they can't make a living, they won't be viable. And this is an opportunity for to try and carve out a tiny percent of the quota to ensure that those particular people who live on the island, who are artisan fishers, who are, we're talking about, you know, eight to ten boxes of fish a day is all they're talking about catching. They're not, they're not the massive trawlers. And this is what really annoys them, is that they see the fish stocks being taken by these super trawlers while they cannot make a living. And this particular piece of legislation actually it originated in the previous committee, from the previous doll to the committee that we sat on, which was, I think was chaired by uh, Andrew, Andrew Doyle, I think was the chair of that committee. And it was a report they'd done on the islands. And this particular concept came from that report. And that's why I think it's important that we progress it. I understand you know, that you have to consider everything and there have been legal issues involved. But at the end of the day, the people who live on the islands need to make a living. And this is an opportunity to give them a chance to do that. Yeah, no, no. Like, you, like yourself, uh, Deputy Kenny, uh, I very much value um, our islands and making sure that we have sustainable economic um, uh, livelihoods on the islands. And traditionally, fishing was the biggest part of that uh, and really drove the economy in islands. Obviously, um, less so as the years have passed, um, but in any way we can to work to support uh, f f the inshore fishing sector in our islands and also on, uh, around our coast. Um, but particularly in the islands where, where it's even more significant, um, I, I, I want to do that. 
Um, so listen, but uh, that's why significant time and, asset, uh, and engagement has happened around the, getting the legal advice around the particular bill, which I will be uh, engaging with the committee now further on. And it's also why, for example, for the first time ever uh, last year and this year, I introduced some financial supports as well, particularly targeted the inshore sector and <coughs> those small boats that work on islands. So last year, a boat under eight metres, for example, was eligible for the four th for four thousand euro um, under um, a, a Brexit scheme I introduced. And I've introduced that again this year. So last year and this year, for the first time ever, inshore fishers who would normally never get anything um, would have got €8,000 if they've less than 18 metres, and uh, uh, between if, uh, 8 and 18 or, or 5,500 if they're under 8 metres. So, but listen, this is an important piece of legislation which deserves consideration, and it's one which I've looked at in detail uh, from a legal point of view and will be reverting with Thank considerations in that shortly now to the committee. Well, uh, yeah, I, I understand that, Minister. However, it's 2017, this is 2020. 23, and I think you'd appreciate, you know, that while you can say much, many positive things have happened, many negative things have happened as well, and you know, our islands are dying. That has been the, all reports that have happened over the decades have told us that, that the populations are decreasing, 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 and an opportunity for people to make a livelihood in the islands is what's absolutely essential. This piece of legislation goes some way to do that, and I think, you know, we're here on the last day that the doll is going to sit before the recess. And you're saying that you're going to revert shortly. I think it was last February that we got a response in regard to this piece of legislation that you intended to revert to the committee shortly. You know, we, we need to get action on this, Minister, because continually pushing it down the road is simply inconsequential for, for, for the people who live on the islands and for the fishing community. We're, we're not talking about, you know, uh, people who are out for to make a fortune. They just want to make a living. And it's also an issue of safety. If they have the opportunity to do that, you know, they, they can safely operate their vessels. At the moment, they're out there, they're trying very hard for to make a living, they don't have the opportunity, they're restricted with quota, they're restricted in all kinds of manners, and very often fishermen are going on their own, which is very dangerous in respect of that. So, you know, we, we need to put something in place which will deliver for them. It doesn't cost the government anything. We're not talking about grants or supports here. We're talking about giving people an opportunity for to make a living from fishing what they've done you, for centuries. I'm tired to conclude. You know, I accept it's taken uh, time, Deputy Kenny, and I can assure you if it was straightforward, it would have been dealt with long ago. Um, because I, I did have legal advice on my table um, in relation to the, 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 uh, the workability of the bill and the legality of the bill. Um, I then sought further legal advice uh, in relation to that because it was, I wanted to explore it from every angle and to fully examine what the proposal was and to see what the potential might be. Um, so that's taken time and consideration, and that's why it has taken to now. If it had been straightforward or workable or doable, I'd have been back a long time ago. Was the legal it's advice negative? I, 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 pardon? Was the legal advice negative toward the... It's, the it's, sir, I'll be updating the committee very shortly on it, but I think you can take it. It's been very challenging considering that I haven't... that it's taken this amount of time to consider it and to look at it and to see what the options might be. Um, so, listen, I will, uh, bef before... Uh, uh, before the end of this month, be reverting to the committee with, with my update in relation to the, to the bill. Uh, like yourself, I want to do all we can to support the islanders. Um, as a, from a government point of view, it's a big, big priority. It has been for myself, from a fisheries point of view, I've outlined the supports I've put in place, which have been very specific to the inshore sector, which is the sector which the islanders depend on. And I'll be back by the end of this month now. But the reason it hasn't happened before now is it has not been by any means straightforward or um, uh, easily, easy to bring to a conclusion.